Well, Biden spoke today about the Inflation Reduction Act that, by the way, didn't reduce inflation at all. In fact, it accelerated it by printing a few extra trillion dollars. Well, look, the Financial Times and the Wall Street Journal have started to call, started to call my plan Bidenomics. Initially, I don't think they meant it with great deal of respect. <laughs> with all due respect to them, our plan is working. It's working. The economy has grown since I took office. It grew faster in the, in the last quarter than anyone expected. And, you know, we've created over 13 million brand-new jobs since I took office. 13 million in less than three years. 13 million? No, those were the jobs that came back because you shut everybody down during COVID. The age-old question, though, is going to be, are you better off than you were four years ago? Most people aren't. But this administration touts success for what? Like, it, it's, it's always funny, too, when one word means something totally different than the creators, you know, than it does for us living underneath it. Look at this. Binomics is indeed working when, when we say that you look at the data, right? Cost, cost is going down, right? You think about inflation. For the first time in history, credit card debt for Americans has hit $1 trillion, to be exact, $1 trillion and $3 billion. I guarantee, I promise, I've never broken my word. Anyone making less than $400,000 will not see one single penny in their tax raise. Bidenomics. Bidenomics. And is working. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm curious to see what metric they're using to define working. Well, I, I actually know one, but it, it, it's a hugely misleading. Biden is using an individual metric to define a total success that does not exist. Economic policy success cannot be defined by a single metric. There are cumulative factors in that this White House is completely ignoring. Case in point, sure, the unemployment number is down to 3.5%. Ironically, that's what it was in Trump's last year. But this came with a meager 187,000 jobs added, far fewer than expected in the last report. What they're conveniently ignoring, though, is the record number of people that are not in the job market. There's roughly 7 million fewer people in the workforce now than there were before COVID. That means people aren't even looking for a job anymore. You've seen the signs outside of businesses, or if you own a business, you can understand this. You cannot find people to hire. There's just not enough people to fill the positions that everybody needs right now. The, the way they measure unemployment is actually the number of people looking for jobs. Labor participation is only 62%, meaning 38% of America is not even attempting to work. They're not counted in Biden's unemployment boost or boast. This includes retirees that after that rigorous Democratic lockdowns, more seniors decided to drop out of the workforce and retire with less, maybe drawing down their Social Security a little bit early instead of kicking back into it. Don't, I don't define that as success. What I also don't have to remind everybody about is everything costs more. Since Biden took office, prices or inflation is up 16.6%. That means the dollar you had in your bank account three years ago is only worth 83 cents now. Let that sink in for a second. And Biden counters this by saying, well, people are earning more. Yeah, well, they are a little bit, technically. But if you match that wage bump with the inflation, people are actually learning three, earning 3% 3 less. That's just since he took office. Great job, Joe. Yeah, Bidenomics working. This is ridiculous. The mortgage rates, too, another ridiculous thing. 7%. That's a lot of numbers, but what does this mean for you at home? Or, folks, if you have kids that are just getting into the workforce or the housing market, it means that a 5% interest rate that the Fed has bumped up over the last two years, that's going to cost you or your kids over 30% more a month than a mortgage payment. Good luck getting them out of the basement. Makes the housing market a bit unstable. What happened the last time house market burst? Well, that was 2008. Complete disaster. Millions lost their jobs. Many not even related to finance or the mortgage industry. It was the trickle-down effect. Unemployment went from 4% to 10% in a year. Now, there's another looming catastrophe that you just saw in one of those other clips. Credit card debt, 401k withdrawals, both all-time highs. Unbelievable. Americans have over a trillion dollars on their credit cards. That's a lot of money. Has to be paid back, and the interest rates 
are a lot higher than they were three years ago. And they're, they're using that just to stay afloat in the wake of this Bidenomics. They're even drawing down these retirement plans with known penalties. If you take it out early, you have to pay on that. We just had 10 banks downgraded. And this is according to CBS. Moody's is downgrading the credit rating for 10 small to mid-sized banks, citing growing financial risks and strains that could erode their profitability. The credit rating agencies also warned that it's watching some of the nation's biggest lenders for potential downgrades. Among the smaller lenders receiving an official rating downgrade were M&T Bank, Pinnacle Financial, BOK Financial, Webster Financial, major lender banks of New York, Mellon, U.S. Bancorp, State Street of all people, Truist Financial, Cullen Frost Bankers, and Northern Trust. They're all now under review for potential downgrades, too. These are big names. That means it's going to cost more to borrow. Uh, the middle class is eroding in binomics. But the White House says this. Here's the thing. This is a president who has spent the last two years turning the economy around. You hear us talk about binomics. You just mentioned how we're doing this West, uh, this kind of this West Coast swing, talking directly uh, to the American people about how wages are actually going up, about how inflation is going down over a long extended period of time, more than uh, more than uh, 12 months. That is important. She measures success by how they're talking to people about things. If Joe Biden's turned it around all right. He's turned it right into the ground. Donald Trump needs to keep hammering this. Keep this on the front of everybody's mind. This is far more important than his political persecution. Remind people every day that they had more money in their wallet when he was president. There's your campaign slogan. 